Okay, rolling camera. So Bernie Sanders is not conceding, which is fantastic. Uh, he shouldn't because that means like you're conceding on your ideas, which he's not. He's not conceding on his ideas. They're, Hillary Clinton and he himself are not close enough together. She hasn't moved far enough left yet. Although I did see Joy Reid on MSNBC yesterday saying that Hillary Clinton has been dragged to the left by Bernie Sanders. So what do you know? Pie in the sky guy is actually having a, an effect, according to Joy Joy Reid. Anyway, so Bernie Sanders gave a speech where he he outlined some of his demands that he wants from the DNC. And so let's let's listen to some of them here, shall we? I do believe that we have to replace the current the Democratic National Committee leadership. Uh, we need a person at the leadership of the DNC who is vigorously supporting and outworking to bring people into the political process. We need real electoral reform within the Democratic Party. And that means, among many, many other things, open primaries. We need same-day registration. And that means that anybody in this country can walk in and get registered to vote on the day of a primary or a caucus. We also need, obviously, to get rid of super delegates. The idea that we had, in this case, 400 super delegates pledged to a candidate some eight months or more before the first ballot was cast is, to my mind, absurd. I'm joined now by Joy Reid, the host of MS. Okay. And might I add, uh, preferred voting, uh, the where you, you have two choices, your first choice and then your second choice. If your first choice doesn't get enough votes, your vote goes to your second choice. Also known as instant, in, instant, instant, instant runoff voting. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Instant runoff voting. As, as Jill Stein of the Green Party has advocated for years. No, a lot of people are, are making a stink that he didn't mention caucuses because he does well in caucuses. And they're saying that that's a little hypocritical on Bernie's part that he didn't call for the end of caucuses. And uh, I'm not a caucus fan myself because I, I saw how caucuses are run. Even though they say Bernie Sanders does well in caucuses, uh, they're, they're set up to really favor the establishment. Because whoever, whoever's running the caucus, which is usually the establishment, uh, part, the party insiders run it. And they manip I saw it be manipulated for their favor, right? So it just, but it, but Bernie likes caucuses because he says that it's good to have people come out and debate and try to convince each other and all that. I think caucuses are a horrible idea. So I, I, this is a one spot where I'll disagree with Bernie. I think caucuses are a horrible idea for many reasons. The biggest reason is working people don't have time to go spend three, four, five hours talking with people they don't know in a gym somewhere about <laughs> they need to vote. Right. You know where they can talk to people at a bar. They can talk to them at, a, at Thanksgiving. They can talk to people at Sunday church or after wherever at a Little League game. They don't have time because when I was in Des Moines during the caucus, I was at, at eating dinner at a restaurant and I asked the waitress, are you caucusing? She said, no, I have to work. And I realized everyone in that place had to work. So I'm all forget and they can't caucus because it takes hours to caucus. So I'm all against caucuses. Right. I'm watching Chuck Todd, Chuck Todd, who uh, making the most out of his hair. You just got to say that about him. Yeah, you really he, do. he really, he really is. He's making the most out of it. And I, and I uh, hats off. I'm going to, you know, uh, I'll do everything I can. I'm going to get plugs, whatever I can, whatever I can afford, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm all for people doing anything they can. So, um, my God, what? Nothing. <laughs> that's, that's okay. It's your life. It is. It's your image. It is. I do. I am for it. I get the caps on the teeth and the thing and for the filler and the hair. and Goatee. Go, yeah, I get the, go, when I was fat, I had a goatee <laughs> to cover up the thing. So here is, uh, Ch here's what Chuck Todd, so after that, so now let's keep this in mind. The, the slam on Bernie has been all through this process. The mainstream establishment slam on Bernie is that he thinks too big is that he's pie in the sky, fairy dust, unicorns. And that Hillary Clinton is a pragmatic, she'll get it done. She's not a dreamer, some fairy tale guy like Bernie Sanders. 
She's more pragmatic. She's incremental. You take little itty bitty baby steps. That's the whole thing about Hillary Clinton as opposed to him. That's why they were dismissing him as some kind, even though he's 74 years old, he's been in government for his whole life. He somehow doesn't know how it works and he's some kind of flighty child. He's 74. So uh, here, uh, here's, Chuck, here's what Chuck Todd had to say about that. Here's what he says. Here's what I'm trying to figure out. Sanders has his list of demands. They include new leadership, no superdelegates. It all seems small. <laughs> after, after for 10 months demeaning him and dismissing him at every turn about how he's fairy dusty and unicorny and thinks too bad I'll never get it done and there's going to be there's still going to be Republicans when he gets there I don't know what he's thinking he can't get stuff done why does he think smaller so here he comes out with a list of demands which by the way aren't small he wants to change the way the Democrats nominate their candidate. That's a big deal. And he wants to get rid of the Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who's in charge of the DNC. Also a very big deal. You know, watching MSNBC News is like being in a bad relationship. You know, you can never do anything right. <laughs> Yeah, you're, just, you're thinking too big. Oh, you're too small. Uh, I think it's too big. How about I just do these little changes? You're thinking too small. What, mm -hmm. what, what the frick? What are you, Goldilocks? <laughs> this is, that's literally what he just said. I mean, that was kind of, that's, that was kind of mind blowing. So he's asking the question. I'll, I'll, here, he'll ask it again. And he gets an answer. He gets an answer. Let's listen to what the answer is that he gets. It all seems small. It, it is a little bit small bore, and I think at this point also he doesn't have a lot of leverage anymore now that the primaries are over. But I mean, I think, uh, you know, he's already got his people on the platform committee, so to the extent that it's about getting policy changes in terms of the Democrat, moving the Democratic Party to the left, that's going to come about through the platform committee and through his conversations with Hillary Clinton. Uh, the procedural reforms, they, they may seem relatively small bore, but these are the kind of things that uh, he got very worked up about during the primary. There's no doubt, but Paul Kane, he hasn't been a member of the Democratic Party for very long to suddenly say, change all your ways, you club that I just joined. No, tell, tell me if I'm out of my mind, but did Chuck Todd just do, say, two completely different things? Did he just say, oh, man, those things he wants, small, and then he turns to his next guest and goes, this guy wants to change the whole way they do everything. Did he not just do that? Yes, he did. He did that. Yes, he did. He did. So she gives him an honest answer about, no, he, this is actually what he's been talking about all along, and he's got a real chance to make these things happen, and this is a big deal, and he's already got people on the rules committee, and always, uh, this guy's making that, and uh, Chuck Todd, what the heck, he wants to change everything? <laughs> the guy's thinking too small. Well, he's actually getting it done. Why does he want to change everything? Who is he? Yeah, he went from, he has no ambition, all the way up to, how dare how he? How dare you? How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> how, that's exactly what happened, Yeah, Hank. That is exactly what happened. He went from, he went from, this guy, what it's so bad yeah. with him? Why doesn't he think big to, that is certainly hubris. <laughs> Who does it, hey, Mr. Fa must be nice, Mr. Fancy Pants. Mr. Want to Change Everything. So you just saw it in real time. You saw it within, I don't know, what was that, 30 seconds? Chuck Todd just said two completely opposite things. Completely. Any way to dismiss Bernie Sanders. It's just, I don't think, I don't even think he's doing it consciously at this point. I just think that's how the gears work. With If there's, if there's a way to dismiss this guy who's going to upset the money cart inside news and politics, we, whatever it is, no matter what, it's, again, it's like watching people try to take a dump on Bernie Sanders is like listening to Bush supporters defend George Bush after Katrina. That's what this is like. It's like whatever they can, whatever, doesn't matter if it makes sense, doesn't matter if it contradicts what they said five seconds ago. That's what Chuck Chad said. Doesn't matter that what he just said freaking 10 seconds ago, he completely contradicted. Doesn't matter. And by the way, nobody calls him on it. Guess who did call him on it? The Jimmy Dore show. Mm. <laughs> uh, so now, uh, let's go back. Let's see what else. I don't know what this clip is. You know, Susan, it seems that one of the things that Bernie doesn't have going for him is there aren't a lot of congressional Democrats up there that are upset that Clinton's the nominee. Like the way, like the, he doesn't have any allies going, Bernie, let's, let's, let's go. Let's do more. Sure. Right. So there's another way to dismiss Bernie. Bernie doesn't have any friends in Congress. That's another one of those things. He doesn't have any friends in Congress. Yeah, he'll... You know, all he has is uh, millions and millions of voters, 46% <laughs> of the pledged delegates. 
in the Democratic Party. That's all he's got. That's all he has. That's all he can do is get 30 to 60,000 people to show up to hear him talk about policy at a clip. That's all. That's all he has. And you know why he doesn't have those people in Congress screaming for him? It's because he doesn't play the money game, right? And because they're all part of the establishment. You saw them all knuckle under. They're all afraid of Hillary Clinton and the Clinton machine, which is why nobody else would get in the race, which is why Bernie Sanders got in the race. You think he wanted to do this? You think he wanted to travel around the country doing three hour long speeches every goddamn day? You know what that takes out of you? And he's 74. It exhausted me to go to one of those things a day. It exhausted us. So, yeah, that's why he doesn't have. Oh, yeah, oh, another BS way to try to find a way to dismiss Bernie Sanders. Doesn't have a lot of people in Congress. He's screaming. If he doesn't have friends in Congress. Everybody respects the guy. Nobody can speak up on his behalf because it'll cost them inside the Democratic machine. That's why. That's why. That's why when Tulsi Gabbard did it, it was a big deal because everybody knew what she was risking. She left the DNC to stand up for a true liberal inside the Democratic Party.